There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. It's Saturday night. It's time for a tipsy tag. This time, courtesy of Kieran of KD Books. His new very first debut tag, Call Ya Bookshelves. And I was tagged by the original, the one and only, Kieran of KD Books. Lovely, new to me booktuber, recommended heartily by Greg of Supposedly Fun. So let's get started. Number one, what is the most recent book you've added to the bookshelves, and why did you purchase it? Well, the why part is easy, because I am just a book-buying maniac recently. It's my diminished psyche's response to the pandemic. I just can't stop buying books, people. So the latest one came yesterday, and only one came yesterday, I think. So that's saying quite a bit, and that's this tiny little short story collection called The Death of Bagrat Zakharich and Other Stories by Vaza Pshavala. Okay, I tried. I couldn't find any help, so let me try it again. Hey there, this is Editing Sean, and I have no idea what that weird electronic, staticky, weird, whatever it is, sound is. I've never had it happen before. The good news is it, it stops right at about the three minute mark of this video if you want to skip ahead or if you can uh, deal with it knowing it will end soon, but uh, sorry about that. Vaja Pshavela, translated from the Georgian by Rebecca Ruth Gould. The Death of Bagret Zakarich and Other Stories. And this is a teeny tiny little booklet published by Paper and Ink. Pshavela died in 1915 and he was about 50. Three short stories by the great Georgian writer. And I bought them because I discovered this publisher, Paper and Ink, and had bought a whole swack of other of their tiny little short story booklets a few days before, and this was one I missed. That's as much justification as I have. The uh, third story is in verse, but the other two are in prose, thank God. I will try it one of these days. Number two, what book did you buy with absolutely no desire to read it? I don't usually do that unless I'm buying a reference book, and I don't buy reference books. So I scoured my shelves, and I came up with this. I didn't buy it, so I'm cheating a bit. It was a gift. I used to be an uh, active member of Litzy, which is like Instagram for book nerds. I don't really have much of a presence there anymore, but we, they did Christmas book box exchanges and even Valentine's day book box exchanges and those were really fun because you never knew what you'd get but your silent partner your mystery uh, exchange gift giver uh, would study your litzy profile to see what you might like and i got this and it's a very lovely looking book but it's one of those books that i know that i will never read cover to cover and it is called i'd rather be reading a library of art for book lovers by guinevere de la mer and it is a really beautiful book Full of, full of bookish art, but some text. And I just know that I will never sit down and read. I haven't looked at it for years. The art is indeed lovely, but there are little essays or something in it that I know that I will probably never read. So that would be my best answer for prompt number two. Number three, what is the most awkward shape or size of book you own? Uh, there's a few contenders, but I'm going to go with a, the local history of the town in Saskatchewan, the drinky-dink little town. 150 people when everyone is home in Saskatchewan, Canada, where I grew up. And that local history is called The Land of Plenty, 2007. And this one is too tall. You can see my head. That's how tall it is. To fit in any of my shelves. My parents were on the editing team that put this together. There had been a history of plenty Yes, the small town where I grew up is called Plenty, Saskatchewan. Uh, you can drop your puns in the comment section below. I'm sure I've heard them all. In 1967, the year of Canada's centennial, and then they did a, a sequel that was quite me, and I have a write-up in here. What I love the most about this is that there was a picture taken, when was it, 1915? Oh, 1928, of uh, the, all the students of the... Plenty School that, that was long gone in my day that shows the town and the students. And it's a photograph that was long, a long photograph, and has been folded and got lots of creases on it. But they, they made a pull-out thing here, so I want to show you that. Isn't that fantastic? And there are a lot of, none of maybe my relatives in it, but a lot of people that I 
knew when they were much older. So of what, what might still be there now, maybe nothing. I think some of the grain elevators there might still be around, but anyway. Awkwardly sized and quite a keepsake. Number four, show and tell. How do you arrange your shelves? That's so hilarious. I don't arrange my shelves. There's some back there. That's almost all the shelf tour because this says, or uh, Kieran is encouraging us to give a shelf tour and I don't do shelf tours and I don't watch shelf tours. I find those one of the most boring kind of videos to watch. So I've never actually watched one. It's right up there with uh, unboxings. Um, but I will show you the four shelves at the top of one of my bookshelves that are organized in that my favorite books that I've read that I possess are there. The rest of my shelves, I have many bookshelves scattered throughout the apartment and they are not organized by fiction or nonfiction, by books read or unread. I refuse to organize my books. I always have refused and I always will. Part of what I love about that is I love searching for books and especially discovering books during that search that I had forgotten I have and kind of getting reacquainted with it that way. Now, when I live in a particular place, I've lived here now for two years and a bit, you would think that I would get to the lay of the land eventually and I would be able to find a book and that's actually largely true. But because I am pulling books out for book tags like this and they don't go back in the spot where I got them, it's still a delightful mystery. Where might that book be? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But here is a quick look at my favorite books that are all grouped on one particular bookshelf. Number five, how often do you have a book haul? A book haul? A book haul? Book haul? Book haul. <coughs> there is only one used bookstore for English language books in Tokyo anymore. When I first arrived here 11 years ago, there were probably three or four. There's only one left, and it, it's a ways away from me. It's about a 30, 40 minute train ride. So about twice a year, I go to that bookstore and I take books that I don't want anymore, as many as I can carry, and he gives me a good deal in trade. I'm not interested in cash. I want the higher value to trade, but his stock doesn't move that fast, so twice a year is as often as I ever go there. Plus, I have to time it seasonally because he has no heat and no air conditioning, so I don't go in the summer and I don't go in the winter. And I think he's closed for the pandemic. I don't know if he's going to reopen. I will show you my bail pile. There's two piles. Getting pretty high. You know I'm the empress of bailing. There is a lot of things in the bail pile. Bail pile. Bail piles. Bail piles. And I never watch book on hauls. Rarely watch book hauls, but I love doing book hauls. People seem to enjoy when I do a book on haul because, as Kieran has commented on, I love to be a little bitchy. So stay tuned for my next book on haul. Number six, how do you decide if you are going to keep a book or give it away? Well, if I hate it, I usually give it away. But if I really can't stand it and I think that I'm going to have my way with that hated book for book tag after book tag on into the future, I, I will save it so that I can show it to you for at least a year before I get rid of it. Maybe keep it forever. The current one that is occupying pride of place on my most hated bookshelf is Ocean Vuong's On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous. Love to show that while I read you some of the shitty prose therein. But anyway... <laughs> Seven, what is a contender for the oldest unread book on your shelves? I double-checked, went back to Kieran's video, and he means the book you've owned the longest, not the oldest book. So, there's lots of contenders. I should say that 
I'm Canadian. I've been living in Tokyo for uh, maybe 11 years, something like that. And I had a library, personal library in Canada. I lived in Vancouver before coming to Tokyo of about 5,000 books. And I liquidated that library, kept about 10 boxes of books, my favorites. They went to the farm. I am showing you those books in an ongoing series of my own unboxing videos. There's one more video to put up. But the rest of it, I just got rid of. Sold as many as I could and then just gave them to a charity in order to be free to start my life in Japan. Of the books that I'd saved and lugged to Tokyo many years later, like last summer, here is one that will make Steve Donahue excited, and that is a huge biography of Alice Munro, uh, Writing Her Lives by Robert Thacker. It is on red, it is chunky as all get out, probably about 500 pages before the index. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever read it, but and that's one of the oldest ones in my current library. Number eight, what book have you read and is currently on your shelves that you would struggle to give a summary on what actually happened in it? I have chosen the Argentinian writer Ariana Harwich's Die My Love, brilliantly translated by Sarah Moses and Carolina Orloff. I read this for novellas in November, maybe two and a half years ago, and I absolutely loved it. I don't know how to tell you what it's about. It's set in France. The protagonist is Argentinian, and she has a French husband, and she is having a lot of mental delusions, but it's funny in a way that doesn't mock mental illness, I didn't think. I haven't heard anybody else criticize it for that. And it just is such a intrapersonally, intrapsychically madcap novel that I wouldn't have the foggiest idea how to tell you what it's about, but it was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I didn't think I would, and I absolutely adored it. Number nine, some books are to be cherished. Which book would you never throw or give away? A lot of my books I would never throw or give away, but if I, if there was a fire, there's one book. If I could only grab one, it would be this one, and that is the Barbara Pym cookbook. Barbara Pym is my favorite writer, and this is a cookbook of the recipes that she loved to cook, and I think also featuring dishes that, she, that were referred to in her novels. And it was put together by her sister, Hilary Pym, together with Honor Wyatt. I have another copy, a reprinted paperback copy, somewhere on the shelf, and then I got this in the mail from my dear friend Britta Bowler of Booktube and German-Dutch novelistic fame, and I thought, okay, I already have it, but it's a beautiful hardcover edition in the cover design of one particular series of Barbara Pym novels, so I was excited, but I thought, oh, I've already got it, I don't want to tell her, and then I opened it, and Barbara Pym's sister... Hillary Pym has autographed it! Oh my god! <laughs> I do that every time I show it. So yes, that is my most treasured possession. To purchase a signed Barbara Pym uh, would, I have, will never have that much money, but somehow Britta stumbled upon a signed Barbara Pym cookbook, and I am just, I know quite a bit about her sister, and her sister was the prototype for many characters, especially in her debut novel, Some Tame Gazelle. I'm just very, just, just indescribably ecstatic about that, so that is the one. This is a very enigmatic prompt, number 10. Don't throw those books away. Out of the ones you've discussed, choose one to actually send to someone close to you or arrange to send it to another booktuber. Why have you chosen this book for them? So I kind of balked at first about it. It's like, I'm not giving my books away. But I thought, well, I don't have to do it exactly, literally. Uh, because there is one book that I've mentioned before that I have recommended a couple times, and I don't know if he has picked up on it yet, but if he hasn't already acqu acquired a copy, I want to send Dan of the Weird Book Book Club his own copy of Die My Love by Ariana Harwich, because did you notice the name of his channel? The Weird Book Book Club? He reviews weird books in his own inimitable fashion, and I have long said to Dan, Dan, you need to read Die My Love by Ariana Harwich. Dan, if you're watching, I want to send you a copy of this. I want to get this into your hands, and I want you to review it. There's no time sensitivity to your review. You can take your own sweet time, but this is a Dan book, I think. So that was a blast. Thank you, Kieran, for the great tag. Call ya, call ya, bookshel call ya bookshelves. And I'm going to tag some people by going to my comments. 
So I will tag Brian of Bookish, the most recent commenter, 25 minutes ago. Kathy Grimm, cousin of Always Doing, Heidi of My Reading Life, Zoe Beck, and I won't tag people that are booktubers that never do tag, so I'm skipping past them. Mark Nash, Lucas of, he says, a bit of lit. His channel name, according to YouTube, is Bits of Lit, but that guy. Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read. I just put up the night that I filmed this video, our book chat video, and Kieran was excited to find another booktuber from Wales. So, Charlotte, I know you're not much of a booktube tag maker, but Kieran would be tickled pink if you would do it, and so would I. Thanks for watching. <laughs>